Okay, so my uh, Patreon community just brought this tweet up to my attention. Um, and it's a little bit of background, I'll, I'll give you some more in a second. But basically, uh, United States Congress has just dropped this little gem of a uh, regulation, uh, basically creating a new regulatory agency um, for artificial intelligence. And having gone over this, you know, skimmed it myself and like interrogated it with Claude and asking questions, it basically looks like what Sam Altman and others have been talking about. Uh, Gary Marcus, um, Jeffrey Hinton, uh, what all these people have been calling for for at least the last year um, in terms of regulation. So, uh, but what I wanted to start today was this initial response. So, this is a new AI proposal from AI Policy US. It should it should slam the Overton window shut. So a little hyperbolic already. Um, it's the most authoritarian piece of tech legislation I've read in my entire policy career. Um, it, no, the EU AI Act is way way more overboard. So again, with the hi hyperbole, um, everything in the bill is aimed at creating a democratically unaccountable government jobs program for doomers who want to regulate math. I mean, this is a work of poetry. It's garbage, but it's a work of poetry nonetheless. Um, I mean, just check out this section where in a mere six paragraphs attempts to route any potential checks from Congress to the courts. Um, okay, sure, whatever. Uh, what the, the, the paragraphs that he's outlined here, basically, like, if an, if an emergency order is issued by either this agency or the president, you have to cease AI activity. This is no different from, like, the FAA or FDA, like... All kinds of regulatory agencies have this kind of emergency authority already to shut down something that is imminently causing harm or is dangerous, um, whether it's a bio lab, whether it's a nuclear site, whether it's even trains, right? You can like there are there are agencies that can tell you shut down that train. Look at Boeing. Look at the doors blowing off of Boeing right now. Um, and guess what? The FAA has the authority to ground airplanes. So that level of authoritarianism is uh, this level of hand wringing doesn't make any sense. Now, I will say that I have passed this piece of legislation on to my attorney friends. So we'll see what they say. Maybe I'm the one who's off base here. So um, without further ado, this is this is the actual act. Here's the PDF. Um, and one thing to keep in mind, this is a draft. It is not the final uh, version. This is just the current draft. Um, so the Responsible Advanced Artificial Intelligence Act. Um, uh, be it enacted by the Senate and the House of Representatives, so on and so forth, to establish an administration that will oversee and regulate advanced general purpose artificial intelligence systems. Great. Not a big deal there. Um, they, they lay out what they mean by flop and training runs and frontier AI systems and frontier AI labs. Again, it's all really, really straightforward stuff. Like This is not arcane language. Now, what I will say is that they define... The four tiers, and this this is where I will agree with criticisms because we already knew that this was coming. Um, and so one of the things, one of the one of the criticisms was, you know, if at least ten to the twenty four flops during its final training run, that's a medium tier concern. Um, and then if it's two, uh, ten to the twenty six, that is a high concern, and above ten to the twenty six is extremely high concern. Okay, fine. I'm not sure who they consulted for this. Maybe they asked, I don't know, like Ray Kurzweil or, you know, a few other people, like how, how powerful do you have to scale these AI systems until they require regulation? Now, the, there's a few reasons that I think that this, this classification system, just using the relative power is kind of dumb because there is the possibility that AI systems will be very dangerous without that level of uh, computer performance, particularly with distillation. Um, as we, you know, go for uh, two, you know, four floating point uh, uh, bit models and distill down to one bit models and find other algorithmic efficiencies, it's entirely possible that the most dangerous models will not even be that powerful. But again, that's speculation on my part. I don't know who they consulted for this. Um, now, what I will say is that um, they do identify like some of the primary big risks that we're thinking about, like bioweapons and cyber attacks and fully autonomous artificial agents. Um, okay. Uh, now, this is where I'm just like, hold on. Because if you squint, GPT-4 uh, already constitutes what I would say an extremely high-concern AI system. So let me go through the, 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 the criteria for extremely high-concern uh, AI system. One is the AI system uh, has or could easily develop the ability to significantly assist with a development manufacturer or deployment of biological, chemical, radiological, or nuclear weapons. This has already been proven many times with um, with various like 
papers that are published for free on archive where they just gave college students like undergrad college students unfiltered access to GPT-4 and they said, Hey, um, go use this to like create gain of function bioweapons. Go use this to figure out how to make chemical weapons. And guess what? They were able to succeed. Now, of course, Sam Altman has been on out on uh, in the public saying, oh, it's not that helpful yet. It doesn't really do any of those things. Uh, but here's the thing is the base model versus what it has been trained to do, because even Elon Musk with Grok, it's like it'll refuse to do some of those things. The fundamental capability uh, of the model to do these things versus uh, post facto fine tuning to cause it to refuse, very big difference there. GPT-4 is already capable of all of these things. Now, uh, part of the duty of care that's outlined in this, and I'll show you what I mean, there's some criteria that it, that it lays out. Basically, it's up to the model trainers to make sure that they don't release these like unmitigated, untamed models into the wild. So you could make the argument uh, that, that uh, GPT-4 already circumvents this, um, especially because jailbreaking is a thing, so that would be a failure of duty of care on their part. Um, so that's one thing. Um, the AI systems could, uh, has, or could easily develop the ability to autonomously spread, replicate in an uncontrolled manner or take over external computers. Obviously this one is going to be a little further off just because of the size of the models and the size of the hardware that's required. Um, but you could imagine a future where, because there's more and more GPU clusters deployed across the world that you could have autonomous AI systems metastasizing from one data center to the other, but there's a lot that would have to go into, to making that happen. Um, but the fact the fact that we have this Skynet like thing that is being put into U.S. legislation, the the era of fiction is over. This is this 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 one right here is to say don't let Skynet happen, <laughs> don't let it you know metastasize through the through the hive like the Borg. Um, so that's fine. They can't do that right now. I agree. Fine, whatever. If if it does have that capability, it's extreme risk. But honestly, I would personally characterize. Um, uh, GPT-4 as extreme risk based on this alone. Number uh, three, or letter C, the AI system has or could easily develop the ability to accelerate scientific research to such a degree as to undermine national security and de destabilize the global balance of power. 100% true. Every scientist I know is already using this technology. Um, and it does it... Now, okay, does it accelerate it to the point that it undermines national security? <sighs> Maybe not. Um, but at the same time, you know, Claude Opus, GPT-4, all these other ones, they are actively accelerating not just science, but a lot of other stuff that happens. Law, for instance, um, perplexity accelerates research. So again, this is kind of a really flimsy definition of like what constitutes an extreme, re uh, extreme um, uh, risk. Now, taking a step back, I know that just because it's on paper doesn't mean that like it's a hard and fast rule and some human is going to mechanistically interpret this like, you know, a Vogon, you know, just going to rubber stamp, oh, this is illegal. Um, these are guidelines for humans to follow, but they're not necessarily the best guidelines. And then uh, D, uh, some or all of the AI systems capabilities significantly exceed normal human levels of performance on one or more tasks relevant to major security risks. Uh, yeah. If you use, like, you can give GPT-4 the ability, like, you say, hey, use Nmap to do hacking or whatever. These are already superhuman in terms of writing scripts. Now, uh, is it going to be better than the best hacker? Absolutely not. Is it going to be able to compromise um, a good uh, security-hardened uh, corporate infrastructure? Probably not. But what it can do is it in the, in the, uh, the hands of someone who is highly motivated, these systems will already give your Joe Schmo, the ability to hack at like grade B or grade A tier, not S tier hacking, but it, it you know, cybersecurity risks definitely there. Um, so that's one, uh, that's, that, that's not there, but like, okay, so one, one half, one half, like to me, this is just such a broken uh, system of, of concern. And then finally E, uh, the AI system otherwise poses significant existential or global, global catastrophic risk. I would say that GPT-4 is nowhere near that. Um, but again, this is such a flimsy framework of defining extreme risk. And what this, to me, what this really indicates is that the government, as always, doesn't really know what they're doing. But in fact, actually, one of the things that this uh, that this legislation points out is that we need to develop in-house expertise. So going over to... Um, Going over to Claude to kind of break it down into layman's terms, 
It establishes a new fr- uh, federal administration, the Frontier Artificial Intelligence System Administration. Great. It defines different tiers of AI systems. That's what's what we just went over. It requires develop of media concerns to uh, pre-register with the administration. High concern and extreme high concern require permits for hardware training model weights and deployment. So again, this this requiring permits, that's exactly what Sam has been has been asking for. The biggest concern here is going to be uh, regulatory capture. Um, so it remains to be seen if this is uh, how it's been implemented. It doesn't uh, prima facie. It doesn't really look like it is. It is gearing towards regulatory capture. Remains to be seen, though. The administration will develop standards, rubrics, and an application process for frontier AI permits. So again, this is this is all very very like boilerplate. They haven't even worked out the details yet. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Um, appeals process for permit applications and decisions. This is where the regulatory capture, I suspect, we have the highest risk. Because if, if the, if, for instance, if the people that they appoint on their board of inspectors or whatever come from Microsoft and Google and OpenAI, then who's going to get rubber stamped? It's going to be the Microsoft and Meta and Google and OpenAI that get rubber stamped. And then all the mom and pop shops, all the smaller ones, they're going to want, they're going to be the ones that get uh, more scrutiny uh, pointed at them. IRS has been doing the same thing for a long time. Uh, whereas uh, the ordinary middle class citizens like you and me, we're the ones that the IRS has been targeting for a long time because all you have to do is send a threatening letter to someone like us and we'll pay the taxes or pay the fine or whatever. You send a threatening letter to a millionaire or a billionaire, they hire lawyers and accountants and they basically make the IRS's job too hard. And so by virtue of it's harder to go after big fish, they go after the little fish instead. That is always a risk for any kind of regulation. Um, that's not unique to this, but that is something that I am concerned about. Regulatory capture is the most mollicky part of all of this. Um, but creating an agency that can like ground the airplanes, there's nothing mollicky about that in my personal opinion. Um, it requires self-reporting of transactions that involve high-performance AI hardware. That's kind of a no-brainer. If you remember, Eliezer Yukowski a while ago was saying like you need to register every GPU. I mean, you know, slap a UUID on it, you can track it. You know, throw it in a blockchain uh, logistics program, you got it. Like that just kind of makes sense. Now you might say, okay, but do we track every bullet that we manufacture? Well, I mean, the military does do a pretty good job sometimes of tracking all of their munitions. Also, the, the U.S. military is known for leaving munitions on battlefields, but that's an entirely other other story. Uh, let's see. It establishes civil liability and duty of care for AI developers with strict liability for tangible damages caused by frontier AI systems. Criminal penalties are also specified. So I've got those in the next next part. Um, but this is this is another thing that was uh, discussed at some of the public congressional hearings, particularly those with Gary Marcus and a few others, uh, Sam Altman. Um, we're basically by creating a framework of liability of civil and criminal liability that says, oh, hey, here's an entirely new class of things that you could be liable for um, if your if your AI models break the law or hurt people in such, such and such way, which this is a way to basically play mediator, say, hey, if you have a if you have standing to bring a lawsuit to say this this AI model has harmed you, um, whether on a civil civil level, so the the penalty would be you know financial damages or criminal, which could result in jail time. And actually, they do outline possible jail time in this. That holds the AI companies responsible for what they do. So the safety people should be pretty happy with this. Um, now uh, you know me like I'm both on the acceleration side where I just think acceleration is default. I also think that there are some big risks. So to me, I think that this does strike the balance. Personally, I feel like this does strike the balance between um, the friction of regulation. Uh, I'm not necessarily happy about the risk of regulatory capture, but it does also allow for um, for things to continue at a decent enough pace. It grants the administration emergency powers to suspend permits, issue orders, and take other actions if Frontier AI systems pose an imminent major security risk. Again, the FAA can ground airplanes if, if their doors explode off. I don't really see any fundamental difference on principle to that. Um, because if someone is at risk, great, shut it down. Um, the Next is it provides whistleblower protections for employees reporting major security risks from Frontier AI systems. So instead of people like... Uh, Jimmy Apple's reporting on Twitter and other leaks. Now they actually have a legitimate way of saying, "Hey, um, let's just imagine." I'm not. I'm not going to name any names because I don't want to get sued. But just imagine that you know, uh, gigantic big tech, you know, AI company 
um, you know, X, Y, Z says, hey, you know, our models are safe. They're not able to do any biological harm or whatever. But someone who was on the safety department said, actually, yeah, it can. It can actually do uh, bio, it can aid bioterrorism. And then they submit a whistleblower complaint to this agency that gives them recourse other than just leaking onto Reddit or 4chan or Twitter or whatever. And so this is actually, again, this creates another structural incentive where if someone is more concerned, if if you have someone who is conscientiously concerned about what a company is doing, it is the role of the government to be able to hold that company accountable. Um, Now, if you're pro-corporate, then like, yes, this probably looks very draconian. And I will admit that if you're on the, if you're on the like harder, more libertarian side and just let the companies work it out on their own, um, Granted, I don't trust corporations, and actually from the polls, a lot of you don't trust corporations either. I know a lot of you in the audience trust governments even less, um, (laughs) but it's like the devil you know. Um, And then finally, it authorizes funding the administration through appropriations, permit fees, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then I asked it to just recapitulate the uh, the tiers of risk. Again, I think that the, the, the this classification system is the dumbest classification system. Um, rather than providing characteristics of like, the model was trained on XYZ hardware, you just need to list out which capabilities like are you looking for? Um, or the or the heuristics that you use to measure those those capability those uh, capabilities, and then finally civil liabilities and criminal liabilities. So civil, you know, all persons engaged, blah blah blah. Uh, the duty is owed to U.S. residents. A lot of this is just such boilerplate stuff. Um, but what was interesting is that it also includes criminal liabilities. So class C felony, ten to twenty five years imprisonment for failing to comply with an emergency order conducting act- activities after a permit rejection or violating permit conditions for making false statements about a permit application. So this means that if Google or Meta or Microsoft or whoever, once Project Stargate gets up and running, if they don't have the adequate permits, people are going to jail. So that is like, that is, to, from a safety perspective, that is great. This will prevent stuff like, you know, the AI equivalent of Enron, hopefully, from happening. Um, now... Because again, if you if you are personally at risk, if you're the one who pushes the button on that training run and you don't have the permit to do so, you are personally at risk of going to prison for that. So that is a very, very like incisive thing. This is, from a safety perspective, this is what I am happiest about. Now again, you might say this is super draconian. The government doesn't have the right. But you know what? The government is, is of the people, for the people, and by the people. And I'm glad that my government is representing me in this fashion. Um, Sound off in the comments. Again, I am very, very well aware that this is a highly, highly contentious piece of legislation, and there's going to be some people that are super angry about it, and some people that are super happy about it, and some people that are super disappointed, and a lot of people who don't care. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, Class A misdemeanor, six months to one year imprisonment, uh, improving or using Frontier AI without a valid permit, uh, failing to take required actions under a permit, and blah, 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 blah. So again, just the, you, you got some skin in the game and it keeps going down, you know, class B misdemeanor, recklessly violating any other provision, so on and so forth. Uh, it's got some teeth. So this is when, when some of this stuff started rolling out last year, um, some of the, some of the insiders that I talked to over in Silicon Valley, the initial AI acts were considered to be completely toothless. This is not toothless. Uh, which is good. And then I asked like, okay, what are the duty and obligations that it outlines? This was actually pretty interesting. So the duty of care, um, all persons engaged in the development uh, or or use of AI owe a duty of care to exercise appropriate caution. This includes ensuring that their AI systems do not cause harm to innocent bystanders, do not escape and spread to third-party hardware with, without consent, um, and have model weights that are not leaked and made publicly available. So this is where it also outlines saying, hey, if you're doing this, you actually have some legal responsibility to use this responsibly. If your weights get leaked, that's on you. Pre-registration, uh, again, I can I can imagine how some people might say the require for registration and permitting, that could be seen as a rather draconian, maybe a little bit of overreach, um, or also that this could be a way that uh, regulatory capture is implemented because when you say you are good and you are not, you kind of you shape the 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 landscape, and so if if the big players like Google and Microsoft, if they get the if they get the fast lane, but everyone else uh, takes a little bit longer, that's creating an unfair market in, uh, environment and also sets the stage for regulatory capture. So, like I said, that pre registration and those risk tiers, that's what I'm most unhappy about. Permitting, this makes sense, just like how you're not allowed to fly a jumbo jet without permitting. Go figure. Like I don't really see any difference. 
self-reporting, uh, you know, I guess self-reporting like Sarbanes Oxley isn't isn't Sox like isn't that gone now or something? Anyways, point being is if you're if you're in the financial sector, if you're dealing with uh, you know toxic chemicals or whatever, lots and lots of regulatory agencies require reporting. Not really anything there. Heck, I even have to report. I have to like go register my car, right? That's a form of self-reporting. Um, we all have to do some self-reporting. It's a pain in the neck. Is it is it draconian? I don't think so. Compliance with emergency orders. We already covered that. So there's criminal penalties if you don't uh, comply with with emergency orders. But what's interesting is that the that this AI regulatory agency or the president can issue an emergency order. So if Joe Biden or you know whoever is in office says, "Hey, you got to shut that down. It's a matter of national security. You have to comply with that." Now. Technically, the president probably already has the, the authority to do this, but this enshrines it in law. Whistleblower protections, already covered that. Interagency cooperation, again, pretty boilerplate. Compliancy with regulations, again, all relatively boilerplate stuff. So there's a couple of things that really stand out here to me as some are good, some are spectacularly stupid, but it's the government. What did you expect? So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you got a lot out of this. Let me know what you think in the comments because, again, this is just my initial off-the-cuff reaction um, I could be wrong. I could be reading reading it incorrectly, but I do think it's a step in the right direction. And I also do think that this is categorically better than both the EU AI Act and the UK AI Act or whatever it was called. Um, it's certainly less uh, squishy than those. This is much more hard and fast in terms of what it lays out. So yeah, cheers.